Hey guys, today I'm gonna to share with you an easy solution for organizing your entire homeschool, even if you only have a very small space by using a homeschool cart. And I'm gonna give you a full tour of what I keep on my homeschool cart to keep virtually everything that I need for our homeschool in one place. If you're new here, welcome to my channel. My name is Erin. I'm a homeschooling mom to four kids. This year we have a kindergartner, a third grader, a fifth grader, and a seventh grader. And we have been homeschooling from the very beginning. I love to share things here on this channel that are just things that I have learned along this process of homeschooling that have helped me to create a peaceful and joy-filled homeschool environment for myself and for my kids. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, I encourage you to hit that subscribe button. We don't use desks in our homeschool. The vast majority of what we do happens here in our dining room or out on the living room couch. And that is what works best for us. That is something that is our personal preference and that we enjoy doing homeschool that way. So I want to encourage you that you can do this even without a designated homeschool space. And using a homeschool cart like this one will help you to keep all your stuff organized. And the cool thing about using a cart is that it's mobile. So you can move it out of your space when you have company over or you just wanna kind of tidy up an area. It is easy to tuck away into a different room and out of view. We do have a room that is designated as our homeschool room, even though nothing learning wise actually takes place in there. It's more of a place to just keep all of our library materials and craft supplies and our piano and stuff like that. And if you're curious about what that looks like, I'm gonna have a video coming out in a couple weeks that's a full tour of that room and all of the things that we have there. But for now, let me give you a tour of our homeschool cart and show you all of the things that I keep on it. I found this one at Michael's. The reason I love this particular cart is because it is a longer one. Most of the ones that I have seen before only are about, you know, like to here and you can only fit like four of these, um, magazine holders on. And I knew I really needed to be able to organize six different bins here for all of our curriculum so that I could have one for each of my children, one for myself, and then a space for some extra teacher's guides if they didn't fit in here. And these ones in particular, it could fit another one of these magazine holders right here, but the teacher's guides that I have, like this one is just too long this way to fit in the magazine holder. So I have those just tucked right here as well as my planner. Um, I did just do a video about how I use my planner. So make sure you check that out if you're curious about how that works. So each of our kids have their own magazine holder here with their curriculum in it. And these are all of their workbooks and textbooks that they will be using for subjects that we do here at the dining table so that they're easy to get to and put away. And hopefully it will help us to make sure that we don't lose them because historically we have had a problem <laughs> with kids forgetting where they put their stuff away at. So I'm really hopeful that this will help us to keep our stuff organized this year and just be a much better solution for that. If you're curious about how we use all of this stuff with our curriculum, make sure you subscribe and hang around next week. I'm gonna have a video that's kind of how I organize all of our curriculum and kind of our workflow and assignments and how we keep track of doing everything that our kids need to do. So stay tuned for that video next week. Mine has all of my teacher guides in it so that it's easy for me to get to when the kids are ready to sit down and start doing some schoolwork here at the table. I just used my Dymo labeler to make little labels for all of these bins so that we can just keep things organized and know where everything belongs. Down here on this second shelf, I have a language arts manipulative tote. And these I found also at Michael's. I love that they were the perfect size to be able to fit right through the opening and just perfectly on this shelf to fit three of them. So these were a great find. And let me just show you what's inside in case you're curious what I have in our language arts thing. 
This one, I have an alphabet bingo game. These are mostly things for my daughter who's gonna be in kindergarten this year for her to be able to do for her language arts. And I have some flashcards, there's some letter ones, and I got this idea of putting these on one of these rings from Dina over at Pursuing Peace. Um, I just hole punched all of these cards and put them on the ring so she can go through easily and work on her letters and the letter sounds. And then I have one with different shapes on them, a couple of different alphabet ones. So I've got like three different alphabet ones just so she can mix it up and have some variety with the pictures. You certainly don't need that. I just found them and thought, well, let's use them. And then I also have this little story cubes thing. This can be for her or any of the boys really. Um, they have, cubes that have little pictures on them. The concept is basically that you roll these cubes and then you make up a story using the images that come up on your cubes. So this is just a fun activity for working on some creative writing or creative storytelling. Um, sometimes I will have the kids make up a story and then I'll record it on a voice memo on our phone just for fun so we can listen to those later or we'll have them write it down if they're working on writing some sentences they can use these for that um, but they're just a great language arts manipulative and then down in the bottom is just some more like little flip books that go along with our daughter's language arts curriculum that she's doing and that's pretty much it that's in the language art tote for the math one i'll show you what's in here too I have a geo board and a little baggie of rubber bands. And this one came with um, this whole set of cards with different shapes for you to try to recreate using the rubber bands. So this is a great way to just work on learning shapes and just some fine motor skills as well. A sand timer that we can use if we need to try to get the kids to focus for a short fixed period of time we can do this to okay finish this problem before this timer runs out or write a sentence before the timer runs out then i have a set of fraction cubes these are just a great manipulative to understand proportions and how how um, numbers divide up into fractions and how many parts make up a hole and that kind of stuff i have a couple protractors a small ruler we have some calculators and one of these compasses. I have one of these learning wrap-ups things. These I got from Usborne, and this one is a division one. So you take the string and you start right here and it says 60, and so every number you're gonna divide by six. So you do 60 divided by six and you find your answer is 10. So you put it there and then you wrap it around to the next one. 30 divided by six is five. 18 divided by six, you find where, oh, where's three? And you work your way around and then you check it on the back. The kids can do this on their own to check on the back to make sure that the, the string matched up with the lines on the back so they know if they've got their answers correct. So this is great for just practicing math facts on their own. I have one for subtraction or something too, but I would love to, I need to get the multiplication one because these are really great to have. And then I also have, this is the last thing in here is think fun these are math dice you roll the two bigger dice and you multiply the numbers together and then you roll the small die and you try to figure out a math equation to get as close as you can to the number that is rolled on the big die i think that's how you do it so we haven't done it yet but that's something that we need to bust out a little bit this year so that is our math manipulative spin and then i also have this one is all just math cubes these are great cubes for learning place value each stack there's 10 of each color and you can stack them up to learn place value or fractions or um, counting and fun just for the kids to play with to keep their hands busy while you're reading or doing something else they're just a nice little thing to have handy and then i have our 
abacus on here. This is another new item to us. We have never <laughs> used an abacus before, but I've always wanted to. And we watched some video on YouTube where these kids in somewhere in Asia were using these and multiplying and doing numbers like lightning fast by just using one of these. So we wanted to get one of these this year and try to figure out how that works. So I'm excited to try that out. And then I also just have a couple of rulers here handy on the shelf. I just have to tell you too, you really don't have to have a lot of this kind of stuff in order to homeschool. They are certainly fun things to have and helpful things to have, but not a necessity. On the bottom here, I have just a small portable whiteboard. This we can use for my son's all about spelling curriculum that he's working on, or we can use it too just for practicing writing letters or numbers for my daughter, as well as I have here on the bottom shelf, this bin that has just a bunch of magnetic letters that a lot of times people have like on their fridge or something like that, but she can use them to put on here to practice spelling words or just matching colors or whatever. It's a, just a handy thing to have. And I also have in this one, our Bananagrams game. This is a great one to have for practicing spelling. They're basically just tiles with letters on them. So you can play games by spelling out words and you could do it independently or as a game with another person, but they're a fun thing to do with their spelling words, whatever words they're working on for the week. You can have them write them out and then figure out how to make them, you know, crisscross, kind of like a crossword puzzle, utilizing some of the, the same letters. That's a fun, just different way to mix up some spelling activities. In the back here on the bottom, I also have this bin that has all of our Matthew C number rods. I don't even know what they call them. We haven't used Matthew C for like eight years, <laughs> so I don't remember, but I kept these because I felt like these were valuable for the kids learning place value and um, how to add things together and just to kind of visually see how those numbers work together. There's a hundred block and then there's 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, all of them that I just have organized here in this bin. Then my favorite find for this year for the cart is this caddy that I found on Amazon. This is a rotating one. <laughs> and it also has, you can't really get down into there, but there's a handle in the middle for them to grab onto. But we have some pencils in here and all of our color, our friction colored erasable pens as well as our markers here. So I love that this we can just grab and set on the middle of the table and the kids can sit you know, on any side of the table and be able to spin it around and get what they need while they're doing their schoolwork. And then my son had this idea to put our colored pencils in this old crayon caddy thing that, you know, once the crayons start to break and get smaller, it's hard to reach down in there to get them out, but it's perfect for using for our colored pencils. So we keep that down here too. And then I just have a tape dispenser. This thing is notorious for getting lost in our house. So I'm excited to have a home for it this year. So hopefully we will be better about keeping that there so everyone always knows where they can get tape. And then on the side here, I couldn't find any um, black hanging little basket things for the cart on Amazon, but I found these, they're just bathroom caddies that have like the three dividing things in them um, that I found at Fred Meyer. And then I got some command hooks that I just stuck upside down on the back of it so they can hang on the side of the cart. And so here I have our dry erase markers and here's our wet erase markers for doing our laminated map drills, as well as marking off the kids' school charts and what they're working on. And then I also have down here a another one with just a thing of glue and some scissors and some glue sticks. So I like that these, again, are something that I or the kids can just grab and set on the table when they're working on something and then it can go back and has a place to stay. I hope you enjoyed this little video of our homeschool cart and hopefully you got some ideas of ways to keep your homeschool organized as well. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that thumbs up button below and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.